You've had this conversation on a national level when you ran for president, when you run for statewide office, in Congress. For people who don't follow it as closely as you do, what's the most effective change that they can vote for, that they can choose? What's the thing that is going to reduce us coming out on a, on a semi-weekly basis and talking about mass shootings? The, the only thing that is going to change this is political power. You leave the same people in the same offices and expect a different result, then, then you're crazy. And, and, and you're going to get more of the same. That was Texas's Democratic candidate for governor, Beto O'Rourke, talking with reporters here in Uvalde. Shortly after that exchange, I followed up with the candidate and asked him about the choices that Texan voters will face this November. The choice is to vote for people who reflect and represent your values. What I'm trying to say is that too often we dismiss folks who belong to another political party. And we say all Republicans are this or that, all Democrats are this and that. I'm just saying that the majority of us in Texas, which includes Republicans and Democrats, want the right thing. And their values are unreflected by those in power who continue to ignore this kind of slaughter that we're seeing in our schools. And yes, it, it so happens that Democrats right now who are on the ballot are for common sense gun laws. Democrats are for a woman's right to choose. Democrats are for a state that's big enough for all of us, regardless of, of who you love or how you love. Um, Democrats are, are for what I think allows this state to fulfill its promise and its potential. But when you meet with the parents of a 10-year-old girl who was shot and killed two days ago, as, as I did, and they tell you that girl will never live to her potential or promise. And she was the most beautiful girl. She was the happiest girl. She was the most talented girl. And, and she's never, she's never going to get there. You, you, you've got to vote like our lives depend on it, because clearly the lives of these kids depend on it. And, um, and, and, and I've just got to make that case to the people of, of Texas to make sure that they understand there is an option right now to do something better, that this doesn't have to be our future. This isn't our fortune. This isn't our fate. This, this is on us to do something about it. And, and in Texas history, there are so many examples of people who've stood up and stepped up and over years and sometimes decades been able to achieve the, the big important thing they were fighting for against tough odds, wasn't easy, maybe they failed a couple times along the way, but ultimately they got there. And that describes the people of Texas right now. We, we are going to get there and we cannot give up hope. We cannot succumb to despair. We've got to stand and fight. Why then, though, if you've got a state which has led the country in abortion restrictions, which has led the country in, uh, in, in transgender discriminatory laws, and, and now with, uh, with, with, with guns, how, how do you feel that you move the needle on this? Are Texans prepared to say enough, we're not going down that road? Because there doesn't seem to be any punishment for Republicans who, who are on the wrong side of these issues, in your opinion. There, there will be a reckoning and an accounting on the 8th of November of this year. I just want to make sure that, that every Texan has the opportunity to make that choice. And I'm asking the people who are working on this campaign to go out and meet their fellow Texans without regard to party affiliation or past voting history or anything else, and just make sure that each of us has a chance to do the right thing. Um, I think that's all that we want.